After leaving Warren Island, we cruise all day through an archipelago of tree-covered islands. In places, the currents run strong and venture is buffeted by the squirrely tides. Stop for the night in Dunbar Inlet on Sukwan Island. As we approach the anchorage, we notice several black bears working their way along the edge of the water. We launch the tender and follow one bear, keeping a minimum 100 yards offshore. He pays no attention to our presence as he meanders along the shoreline. This is a different bear, but he too is browsing on grass. During our overnight stay, we see a total of six bears, including a mother and two cubs. The following day, we spend the night at Dundas Island before entering Canada at Prince Rupert. As usual, this takes only a simple phone call. Leaving Prince Rupert, we head for Grenville Channel and Baker Inlet. The entrance is narrow and the bay is four miles in length, so large volumes of water stream through the narrow bottleneck every six hours. We need to be there at slack water. This is where our ability to run fast is an advantage. We push ahead at 16 knots. The narrow entrance is hard to spot and contains a dog leg, making it impossible to see whether it is clear. It opens up into a broad and extensive inlet. We pass a landslide, which are common on these steep hillsides. There is much rain and very little topsoil to anchor the roots of the trees. As we approach the head of the bay, we are treated to dramatic lighting effects. We see another black bear here, but he stays a long way off. He too is eating grass. When we come to leave the following morning, the entrance to the inlet appears as a blank wall of trees. It is low water slack, so the channel appears even narrower and more foreboding.
We continue down Grenville Channel, then divert from the Inside Passage and head west to Alston Cove off Laredo Inlet on Princess Royal Island. The following morning we awake to find ourselves wrapped in a coverlet of mist which slowly dissipates to reveal the land of reflections. We cross Laredo Inlet to enter the Bay of Plenty. According to the guidebooks, this can be a good place to spot white spirit bears, actually black bears with a genetic variation, but we see no bears of any color. We anchor not far from another landslide. There is a stream at the head of the bay which is only navigable at high tide. At that time we set out in the tender and meet Dave and Gail, a couple in their sixties who are planning to circumnavigate large Princess Royal Island in their two-person kayak. They have set out from Klemtu and are on day four of what they expect to be a 24-day trip. They are entirely self-sufficient and they carry food they have prepared and dehydrated themselves before leaving home. They are living proof that you don't need a fancy boat to explore places such as this. You just need the will and the spirit of adventure. Together we explore the stream, but we cannot dally or we will be left high and dry on the wrong side of an extensive mudflat as the tide recedes. We see no salmon. The difference in numbers of fish between the streams in Canada and Alaska is startling. Canada has great numbers of fish farms which breed Atlantic salmon. In Alaska, fish farms are illegal. As we continue, we are dismayed by the decimation of the forest. In places we estimate as many as 50% of the trees are dying or dead. It is no use pretending that nothing is happening. The evidence is clear to see and very depressing. We enter Meyer's Passage, which is another channel where tidal currents must be treated with great respect. We anchor in a small bay with a wonderful natural wood sculpture. Our kayaking friends had told us about some Native American pictographs on a large rock face in Myers Passage. In the evening light, I take the tender and photograph every likely place without seeing anything. It later turned out to be this one, but you need sharp eyes to spot them as is evident from these photos sent to me by Dave after we had both returned to our respective homes. I have not been able to find out when these images were drawn and by whom. We continue down the coast into familiar territory. We cross the open waters of Queen Charlotte Sound and head to the Broughton Archipelago on the Canadian mainland. 
Here we spend the weekend in piers in Echo Bay, where everything is floating. There are no pilings. This delightful resort has been run by Tova and Pierre for many years. In case you are wondering, this is a spring salmon. Every weekend during the season, they have a pig roast with an individual theme. No prizes for guessing this one. Arr! Continuing south, we see a humpback whale on a tail-slapping binge. We have seen this behavior before. Many reasons have been put forward as to why they do this, but there seems to be no definitive explanation. Many logs line the beaches, waiting to float off at the next spring tide. It is unwise to run fast or at night in these waters. In Nadalis Channel we encounter a pod of orcas. We keep at least 200 yards away. come close to us. So close I have to fudge the video because I was standing in the wrong place. I close this video here with just 130 miles remaining from our 3,700 mile journey to and from Prince William Sound. <laughs>